Two more cool and unique fans on this video today. We have the Cooler Master Master Fan SF120M and the Antec Storm 120. Let's get right into the graphs and the data to do the fan analysis, and then we'll do our open box, see the time stamps to jump to whatever sections interest you. All right, first some basic spec information. On the left side, we have the Storm 120. On the right side, we have the Is My Case Simulation Test. So first and foremost, what is this test generating? Well, there are two main points to look at it. First is I took measurements at a variety of distant, different distances from the fan. So six inches, nine inches, 11 inches, and 14.5 inches. Those distances are representative of different size cases. So at six inches, it's representative of a small form factor, uh, fairly small, tight case. At nine inches, it's representative of a small case, but more or less a standard type format. At 11 inches, we're looking at uh, a medium-sized case. It, uh, that would be considered like a Corsair 550D or the mid-sized towers from uh, Fractal Design or other manufacturers as well. It's just first brand to pop to my mind because the last one, the 14.5 inches, is representative of large cases like the Corsair, or not Corsair, Fractal Design uh, Torrent, which is what that specific measurement comes off of. The second key takeaway from this information gathering is how much does the fan focus its air or lack thereof? So does the fan essentially create a nice column of air being pushed straight to the back of the case so it has very little airspeed drop as it goes from six inches to 14.5? Or does it have a very fast drop indicating that the air is not focused at all and is spreading out throughout the entire case? Personally, I like the focused airflow because I want it to push through, but having some airflow is better than no airflow, uh, and that's kind of period. So depending on what size computer case you're looking at, really depends heavily or allow, allows you to focus in on which data point you would care about most. And uh, when you're looking at these lines, you want them to be as linear as possible. A very steep drop-off indicates basically that it all of a sudden just drops in performance. It basically just spreads the air out so much and it, it's, it's not worth really looking at at that point. So let's focus in on what we're look, taking a look at now. So we've got the Master Fan SF120M and it's taken at a number of data points, so 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100% PWM fan signaling. And we can see that it creates a pretty linear graph um, but we've got nothing to compare against, so this is just comparing against itself, and it overall looks pretty good. The fact that it even has airspeed registering at 14.5 inches at the lowest is a truly remarkable feat. It means it does have a pretty good focused airflow. As for the Storm 120, it is a terrible result. <clears throat> it's just uh, not worth looking at as a case fan, uh, particularly looking at uh, it's lower RPM, so 700 and 1,800. It just drops to zero, and it stayed there. Uh, if you're taking a look at it in a small form factor, it may be worth considering, but anything larger than that, I would just ignore this fan. But keeping along the same trend of these type of graphs, we're going to be taking a look at my noise normalized results uh, versus my control fan. My control fan is based off of the Noctua, uh, NF A12X25 with a little bit of A14 from Noctua mixed into it because I wanted better um, air velocities basically at the 14.5 inch mark that you get with a 140 millimeter fan. So I noise normalize the results and average them together in about a um, three quarters uh, A12X25 to one quarter A14 in that ratio from the results if you were to look at my previous videos where I went through each of those fans. Anyways, so, so our takeaway here is any fan that outperforms the control should be considered a good fan. Any fan that matches it should be, or any fan that matches it should be considered a good fan. Any man that exceeds its performance should be considered 
good to excellent, depending on how much higher it is. And fans that are below it should be considered not particularly good, but it all depends on how close in performance it is. So looking closely at the data, we can see that the master fan is a very good performer. It truly outperforms my control fan in this noise normalized result. The Storm, on the other hand, is a very bad performer, and again, I just wouldn't recommend it for anything larger than a small form factor case. Moving things up to that 100% PWM fan signal, there's my control fan, and the master fan has lost a lot of ground. It's just not as um, high-end performance difference between my control and the, and the master fan. If you look over here, we have the RPMO spinia as well as the noise level. The storm, on the other hand, did sort of move up, in my opinion. It's doing a little bit better here, but if you're running your case fans at 100% PWM, something has gone wrong in your case, and it's terribly overheating. Um, so, kind of ignore this, I guess, but it's it's doing okay. It's not good, though. Next up in our graphs is performance through my CPU air cooler, the Noctua NHU12A, I believe, um, if I remember all the, the names correctly. Uh, and the first graph on the left side is RPM versus airspeed. So this is a pure blade efficiency type graph. So it's how good is this fan with this blade design at moving air? On the right side is noise versus airspeed. And that is a noise efficiency graph. So it's how much air can this fan move at a uh, per uh, noise level. And when looking at these graphs, good fans are sitting over in the top left. Bad fans are sitting in the bottom right. And let's take a look at it. Starting off on the left side with the RPM versus airspeed, my control fan is this darker blue line which anything over it represents, again, a very good fan. Good to very good. And taking a look at the master fan, which is this light blue line, it is matching and doing a little bit better than my control fan. The storm is actually doing very well. It loses a little, little bit of performance there at this 1,700 mark, but then it kind of gains it back again, and it overall stays pretty level above my control. Comparing it against the Storm T3, it they are very similar in, in their performance marks. Matter of fact, it even beats the Storm at um, moving air at lower RPMs, which is kind of surprising because the Storm T3 is a thicker fan, which means it should do better at moving air. But it doesn't really seem to be doing it and at the maximum RP or maximum speed, the reason it's even up there that high is because of its higher RPM. Jumping over to the uh, right graph, we have the noise. So my control fan starts off here and then it's there. And the top performer here is the master fan. So it's it the master fan right now is looking really good. But doing the noise, we can see that the Storm T3 looks to be doing slightly better than the regular storm in this metric. It is a little bit more noise efficient, even though it's not performing, performance wise more efficient. So that is a very interesting result and let's see if it holds true for the next graphs. The next graphs we're gonna be taking a look, a look at are my CFM tests or cubic feet per minute. And this is where I basically blow air from the fan through a uh, cylindrical tube. I know the inner diameter and I know how fast the air is coming out the back because I have my anemometer sitting back there. And I'm able to calculate a CFM. So that is the volume of air that the fan can move. And let's go ahead and just we'll compare them. On these graphs, I did take out the Storm T3 because I didn't really feel it was as applicable. But right here, we have the storm, and interestingly, it is now outperforming the other fans, except at the very top end. The control is catching up right at the top end. The master fan, on the other hand, is below my control, 
So that's a very interesting result because the master fan did so much better in my case airflow test and in my CPU test, but it's doing rather poorly now in the CFM test. If we take a look at the other side where it's a noise versus CFM, we can see once again that the master fan is efficient at being quiet. And then we have the storm, it's still a very good result, and the control. This is why I think it's very important to take a look at the data from several different perspectives, both a real-world test, uh, running it through a CPU cooler, and running it through uh, a CFM type apparatus test. I would like to get my hands on a radiator to do additional testing for a thicker, more uh, thin, dense uh, test so that it's much more pressure optimized. But the way you would use these graph data is if you're looking at a small four-factor case, you want to take a look at the six-inch mark as well as the performance data through my CPU cooler. Those are give trends towards pressure optimization in fans. While if you're just looking at airspeed performance, you want to be looking at the other data points as well as the CFM data. Antec Storm 120. Master Master Fan SF one twenty M. All right, on to comparative data testing where uh, I have listed out a bunch of the other fans I've tested uh, thus far uh, to see how these fans, the one in this test, compare against them. First up in the graphs is the comparative data between the fans through my CPU air cooler. So a couple notable notes about this graph. So a little while ago, I did a whole series of tests and actually published a video on it at the maximum cooling of my CPU cooler. And I used um, my CPU completely unlocked, letting it go to its thermal throttle limit at 91 degrees C, and just let the CPU run at whatever wattage it could draw maximum for each air speed. So I adjusted my, my, my stock fans on it uh, down all the way to minimum RPMs of 20, uh, PWM signal and all the way up to 100% PWM signal and found the associated wattage for pretty much every air flow. So that's what these are. So 130 watts on my CPU cooler is associated, associated to about 0.5 meters per second, while 210 watts of cooling is associated with approximately uh, 1.5 meters per second of airflow. And I have a couple, couple other key positions in there as well. A uh, couple other notes about that. My CPU's maximum draw is 250 watts, and that was at something like 2.8, 2.9, maybe 3 meters per second of airflow, just as kind of a reference point. So I know I don't have any data points over here at 1.8 uh, on this particular graph. But what does this mean for your air cooler? Well, if you don't have the same one as me, you can't use this data directly. However, what you can do is, if let's say you have a Noctua F12 uh, on your cooler. Well, on my noise normalized results, which are based off of 40 decibels by, by my readings, it's not true 40 decibels, and it's 40 decibels literally with the microphone right next to the fan. Uh, just because I'm in a noisy environment, I don't have an uh, anechoic, I'm mispronouncing that word, uh, please correct me in the comments down below, but basically a quiet chamber that allow me to get noise levels extraordinarily low so that I can get more accurate readings. Also, my microphone has some inconsistencies to it. I want to get a better microphone, but I need support from viewers like you. So check out my Patreon page, check or subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow and um, uh, acquire new and better equipment.
but that 40 decibel reading is based off of the Noctua A12X25 running at approximately uh, 1,100 RPM. And I just found that uh, that RPM to be particularly quiet on that fan, where I could just basically not hear it with my desktop sitting right next to me on the floor and my chair, well, again, right next to it. So I chose uh, the reading that I got from my fan as my baseline measurement point. So all these fans are based off of that noise measurement. So I would consider this the maximum speed for a fan to still be quiet. So again, going back to these fans, so let's say you're running the Noctua NFF12 and you want it to run silent. Well, you're only gonna get 0.7 meters per second of airflow. Now in my cooler, that's associated with something like 145 watts of cooling. That's not a lot, but if you upgrade your fan to, let's say, the Wonder Snail, you now get 1.3 meters per second of airflow. You can instantly get a higher wattage if you have an unlocked CPU, or you could run that fan slower if you find it too noisy for you and get the same level of performance, but now it's even quieter, or you could uh, run the fan at that same speed, but if your CPU is locked and draws very little power, you're now running it at lower temperatures. So basically the three scenarios are run it even quieter, run it at the same level and get uh, a higher boost with an unlocked CPU, or have lower temperatures at a low power draw CPU. So that's the advantage of moving up the scale. So if you have the, uh, uh, where's the Arctic P12? Right there. So again, 0.7. Um, so there you get that kind of performance difference. Also on this graph, I want to note the, my margins of error. So my anemometer, so that's the air wind speed gauge, has an error of plus or minus 0.1 meters per second. So fans that are within 0.1 meters per second should be considered functionally equivalent. So for example, uh, right here, the Arctic P12 and the Noctua NFF12, both are rated at 0.7 meters per second. So even the SL Infinity 120, these could all be considered functionally equivalent based on the error in my anemometer. However, in actuality, I got averaged results and ran this test several times and the Arctic P12 came out consistently higher than the NFF12 at this noise reading. So they are in the order they're in for a reason, but if they're within that 0.1 meter per second, you could consider them to be functionally equivalent. Uh, the second note here is my microphone. I do the best that I can, but with my microphone, my error in decibel readings is plus or minus around three and a half, sometimes four. So I do the best I can but there is a plus or minus four decibel reading. So on several graphs, you may see fans that are very close in decibel readings. If they're within four of each other, you should consider them functionally equivalent, even though I took the average that I did, looking at it very closely, but they could be considered functionally equivalent. Uh, back to this data, now that I've gotten all of my explanations out of the way, the master fan SF120M, was spinning at 1,858 RPM. Uh, I have the ARGB version as well. The ARGB was ended up spinning a little bit slower, interestingly enough, despite them having the same fan geometry and everything. And this led to a 0.1 meters per second difference in airspeed. So it's a very good result. So if you want RGB in your case, you could get the ARGB version and uh, you're really not losing anything. Moving down to the Storms, ha ha ha. The Storm 120 regular edition was spinning at 1,300, while the Storm T3 was spinning at 1,400. <coughs> they have functionally equivalent air speeds. However, the T3 was in general a little bit better, but functionally equivalent. And all of them are outperforming the Noctua A12X25, which just kind of blew my mind because this is noise normalized and not. Um, I consider the Noctua one of the best fans. 
So it's just a very interesting result. All right, now we're on to 100% PWM. So you'll notice that my scale at the bottom has changed from 210, 225, 240, 250, and then well, my CPU doesn't go higher than 250 watts. So that's where that is. If you're wondering why my CPU is, it's an 11700K. I don't think I mentioned that before. So right here at the very top, we have the insane fans that spin at 3000 RPM. So some notable fans up here, like the T30 with 60 decibels. And then like the Noctua's are really loud, 69 and 64 decibels respectively. And the Sidewings 4 Pro 120 had a very good 53.4 decibel reading, but it's also significantly uh, less performant, only 2.6 meters per second of airflow. As we move down the graph, we've got like the Wonder Snail, a very high performance fan for its RPM and 50 decibel reading. And then we have the Storm T3 120, it was spinning at 2,265 RPM at 48.4 decibels, moving 2.1 meters per second of air. The Storm 120 regular edition was spinning at 2000 RPM, producing effectively the same noise level at 48.6 and moving two meters per second of air. So you do get a little bit extra performance, whether it's from that extra thickness or is it just from the RPM? It's really hard to tell with this test. But considering from the noise normalized results, they had the same positioning marker. I would say that it's probably a combination of things going on there. As for the Masterfan SF120M, uh, it's functionally equivalent to its RGB cousin, brother, uh, whatever you want to call them, where they have effectively the same noise level at 42, 41.6, basically within one decibel, so it's within my margin of error, and 1.9 meters per second of error. Uh, that is a pretty good result. It matches the stock fans on the Noctua cooler of the, the NF-A12X25. Uh, noise levels are better, surprisingly. Uh, so, again, more interesting results going on here. Um, and then we have other fans just on the graph. I'll let you soak it in and we'll keep things moving. Taking a look at the same data from a different perspective. So this is uh, decibel readings along the bottom and airspeed going up the vertical. So better fans are pointed in this direction. So that's going into the top left. And what do we see? Well, the Masterfan SF120M is right here, this dark blue line, and it is a very good performing fan in this graph. It just does very well in these noise results. I did highlight the RGB version just as a comparison point. They are similar, and that is kind of the margin of error. If I got enough of these fans and tested and tested and tested and tested to infinity, they'd all average out to something, uh, probably between these two. As for the um, Storm, the Storm 120 is this red line, and it's on the better side of the middle of the pack. Uh, so for comparison, uh, right here, I'm, high, I'm pointing at the Noctua uh, A12X25, and the Storm T3 is highlighted right here. So they follow similar trends, but as RPMs or noise, I should say improved error speed, um, gives better noise results for the T3's better thickness. And then we have our poor performing fans, which are like the Arctic P12. Shifting gears and moving to case airflow testing, uh, I have selected on here a number of different fans to for our viewing pleasure. It is a lot. I'm going to try to point to them as best as I can with my screen pointer. Uh, the Masterfan SF120M is right here. The ARGB version is right below it with fairly similar results. The uh, Storm regular edition, as I'm going to call it, is right here. Effectively, this is a flat line. Ignore the little whoop down. The um, thicker version, the T3, is right here. So it actually drops underneath and then levels out over it. So it's it's just doing whatever it's doing. But again, the, just the storms I would not recommend as case fans. The master fans look to be doing excellent in these noise normalized results as case fans. Other notable notes are the Tough Fan 12. It's doing quite well. The Wonder Snail is in there doing very well indeed. 
and we have the this is the a12x25 which is a good result but clearly there are better fans now the storm is right here it's pretty much at the bottom you have the storm t3 also pretty much at the bottom we have the master fan sf120m in this orange line it's pretty much middle of the pack as i would say and the ARGB version, I believe, is exactly, no, it's not exactly, on it's right here, but it's still towards the top of the graph, and um, doing fairly well. Uh, I would say it's pretty much in the middle, the non-RGB version is doing a little bit better than in the middle, and then you have, like, the top performers, and again, uh, this is reliant on RPM to some extent, so we have the Sandlings 4 Pro 120, and it's just pushing a lot more air you have the 140 millimeter version of that same fan then we have like the t30 before it drops off and then this blue one is like the f12 and that's again brute force so over here in the corner we have the uh, fan name the rpm of spinia and the noise level it was generating so depending on what kind of case you have so again if you've got a, a small form factor case you want to look at the six inch mark and it's what noise level will you tolerate? If you're not going to tolerate very high noise levels, you're going to want to pay close attention to what noise these fans are generating. Uh, taking a different look at the data, where this is at the 6 inch mark, we have noise versus air speed. The master fan right there, the 120M, the ARGB version sitting just below it. Then we have the storm right here, sort of at the bottom end of the better groupings of fans, and the Storm T3 sitting just over top of it. And those are doing substantially better than our like burst runners, which are look to be the NFS12B and fans like that. And this is the Arctic P12 in our lower grouping of fans. So overall, the master fan looks to be a, a pretty good case all-rounder, while the Storm is basically just specialized. Uh, taking a look at data from noise normalized CFM testing, comparing all the different fans. So my control is at the top of the graph, and we have the master fan SF120M spinning at that 1,800 mark moving 60.9 cubic feet per minute of air. The master fan SF120M ARGB version is slightly less, around one cubic foot, per, foot feet per minute less of air. The Storm ironically outperformed the Storm T3 in this test, uh, despite the T3 spinning at a higher RPM. So the regular Storm was at 50, and the Storm T3 was at 47.3. And moving through, you can see the A12X25, 43.6, the T30 at 42. And let's move on to 100% PWM fan signaling. Well, the T30 tops the graph. It is spinning at nearly 3,000 RPM. It's also rip roar and loud at 60, but it is moving 141 cubic feet per minute of air. The Noctua NFF12. Uh, IPC, 3000 RPM, uh, 69 decibels, nice, and one, uh, 106 cubic feet per minute of air. Silent Wings uh, Pro 120, here's the Storm T3 moving 84.2 versus the Storm moving 74.8. And they are outperforming, finally outperforming, the Cooler Master Master Fan SF120M, which produced 67 or cubic feet per minute of airflow, while the RGB version produced 65.5. Taking a look at that CFM data from a, just a different perspective, so it's noise again on the bottom versus CFM uh, vertical, better fans going this way, and we have the Master Fan ARGB, we have the Master Fan non-RGB, both sitting towards the top of the graph. Uh, we have the storm that pretty much caught up to them and is just hovering right underneath them. And it just has a much better top end despite, uh, uh, well, it just has a better top end than the master fans do. They're just, they just run out of steam at the top. And the regular storm sitting right here in red 
it uh, it's following the Storm T3 very closely until it reaches, uh, well, quote unquote, higher noise levels and higher, and that just doesn't produce the same level of uh, CFM uh, air speed, basically. Now that we finished like the the main graphs, let's do our open box experience and fan blade analysis and talk about why I think each of the fans got the performance that they did. All right, now that we have finished uh, going over the fans, their appearance, their features, and all this, and all the data, we're on to price to performance ratios. So first up is the price of the fans. The Storm was purchased in a triple pack, making each fan $12, the same price as the T3, in, as a matter of fact. The Masterfan SF120M, when I purchased it, was $35. The ARGB version was $38, so there's not a huge price difference between those two fans for their very so similar performance values. So um, my, my value proposition ig ignores things like RGB, and it purely looks at the airspeed versus how much, how much money it costs. But if you're looking for RGB, you at least know that it's got performance at a similar price. So I've highlighted the fans that are applicable to this, and then I added in the two other ones that are the equivalent fans, just uh, like the, T, the T3 thicker one or RGB version. So the Storm is an excellent value in my case airflow test. And that comes down to its lower price. But one thing to note is that it doesn't, it's a mean time between failure, so its lifespan is shorter. So when you buy a more expensive fan, you pretty much can guarantee that it's gonna last longer, have a longer life. So uh, depending on what's important to you and how much, I mean, how much money you have, you want to weigh in different things. So if you only care about raw performance and getting the very best that you can get, look at my performance data, completely ignore these graphs, jump to the next section. If you're on an extraordinarily tight budget and you're looking for the best bang for the buck, you want to focus in on this, on these data graphs and select your fan from here. And if you're an average user, more like myself, where you want to get a good value, but you want good performance. So very good performance at kind of the best value ratio. That's when you kind of compare the two and pick out the best, best one that suits what you think your needs are. Um, all of that said, so the storms are ranked very highly at the six inch mark. The master fans are ranked above average, but kind of still kind of in the middle-ish. When we're taking a look at 100% PWM fang signaling, the Storm, actually the Storm T3 does significantly better than the regular Storm, but they're still shifted towards the top, but they are not the best. That belongs to the TLG12 and actually the F12 and the P12. So uh, noise normalized, keeping the fans quiet, 100% PWM, don't care about noise at all. Uh, let's move on. So the next one is the same sort of thing at the nine inch mark. So how do these fans compare? Well, the master fan SF120M finally kind of catches up to the storm. Previously, the storm just completely outperformed the master fan, but because the storm just dissipates air in all directions so badly, the master fan catches up. Interestingly, the storm T3 may hangs on to its position fairly well here. Uh, but again, I really wouldn't recommend that as a case fan. The master fan is hanging on pretty well, and the ARGB version, they're above middle of the road, I would say. Uh, moving on to 100% fan speed, and the storm, uh, the storms kind of claw their way back up to be slightly above average, while the master fan has kind of dropped back in position. But it's still not a bad result, it's just more middle of the road. Taking a look at uh, CFM per performance, the Storm, it's a chart topper. It is a truly excellent result in this noise normalized test. And the Masterfan SF120M is still slightly above average with the ARG version just a little bit behind it. 
So it's not a bad result. It is a good fan for its for its for its price. Uh, taking a look at once we're running at 100% PW on fan sailing, the storms continue to do well. Though they uh, lost their chart topper category, they are still ranked what like third, second and third. So that is a good position for those fans to be in, and that comes down to their triple back price, triple pack price, where the storm is like 12 bucks. Um. The master fan has kind of become very middle of the road. It's not a bad position to be in. It's just not a top value fan. And last, but certainly not least, the value proposition running it through my CPU air cooler. Well, the Storm is once again a chart topper in this category. It is a truly excellent result. Uh, the TLG12 was my previous best and it just kind of blows them out of the water. So if you need a cheap fan to strap to your CPU cooler or a radiator, this might be the, they might be the top picks. Uh, the master fan does well, it's above average, but it's significantly lower than the other fans. Uh, once we're taking a look at 100% PWM fan signaling, we can see like the Noctua A12X25 actually is kind of doing better than the master fan and the two storms have dropped back in position compared to the TLG-12, the C-12, it's about equivalent. So they are still towards the top, but not quite at that top value proposition. But they're good results. So would I recommend these fans? Well, their lifespan leaves a lot of questions for me as to how long they'll actually last. So that's the only reason I wouldn't say, yes, go out and buy it. But if you're looking for a good value, and you need to fill your case with some fans, I don't think you could go wrong. Anyways, let's jump to my conclusion section. Well, that's my video for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more content. I've got lots of fan videos, both upcoming and that I've already done. And please check out my Patreon page. But anyways, thank you very much. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time on Computer Tech and More.